Greetings and salutations, folks. It's time to quasi-properly learn a new-to-me skill. I have been procrastinating an entire project because I am intimidated by the embroidery on the underwear. So I've come up with this fun, no-pressure project to teach myself how to do blackwork embroidery. Blackwork embroidery, as almost all techniques and silhouettes and motifs used in the early modern period, has a complex history. It pops up in Spanish dress in the 15th century and, as far as I've been able to find, made its first cameo in Italian dress in the early 16th century, which is my primary reason for learning this technique. But blackwork was probably first appropriated from Islamic culture. There is significant Islamic history and influence throughout the Iberian Peninsula prior to the 16th century, and that influence continues to this day. Historically, black work would have been done using black silk thread on very fine linen cloth. I'm really just learning the technique today, so I'm making a simple modern clutch bag to teach myself the ins and outs before flailing around with a historical reproduction. For this project, I'll be using super chonky Ida cloth. I've had this Ida cloth around for a while, so I don't know what the exact scale of it is, but each warp and weft is four threads. Yeah, chonky. To match this large scale cloth, I'll be using black cotton yarn. Obviously not what was used in the 16th century, but after all sorts of experimentation, this was the best match I had on hand for this scale of cloth. Also for the embroidery, I'll be using a blunt tapestry needle and a hoop. For the bag, I'll need a zipper, lining, I'm just using plain calico, white and black thread, and of course, shears and scissors. Black work is counted thread embroidery, meaning rather than marking a pattern onto the fabric and embroidering along that pattern, you count the threads of the cloth to determine the pattern. There are a few ways to execute a black work stitch. You can backstitch, which yields a complete row of black work with one pass, or do a double running stitch, which means you first do a running stitch, one thread in, one thread out, then go back over the stitch in reverse. With each of these stitches, you need to be aware of what side of the thread your needle is going in and coming out of. For example, if doing a back stitch, your needle should always pass to the same side of the thread on the back of the work. If it helps, this is basically a stem stitch in normal embroidery. If doing a double run, you can either always go to one side of the previous thread, or come out on top and go back through on the bottom. The last stitch is the method I prefer, as the chattering between stitches is less pronounced and on a small enough thread will just look like the twist of the thread. In black work generally, there are outlines which create shapes like leaves and animals, and fill stitches which are patterns to fill in the outlines where necessary. There are also borders which can be simple geometric stitches or super complex. Really, there is some majorly impressive black work out there. But first I want to learn the basics. So I'll be starting out with what I think is a pretty simple fill from the book Beginner's Guide to Blackwork. I love this one because it kind of looks like a checkered pattern, and checkers are very in at the moment, so let's do this. The clutch I'm making is going to be a basic rectangle about the size of a piece of paper. So I began by marking out the size of the bag and the size of the rectangle I'll be filling in with this stitch. I'll be embroidering everything front and back of the bag on one piece of fabric well inside the edges of the fabric since this fabric doesn't fray, it just falls apart. I have plenty of embroidery hoops on hand so that's what I'll be using, but there are many different types of frames you can use for this. And a hoop is maybe the most inconvenient choice since you have to constantly retention the work inside of it. I also prefer to use an embroidery stand for my hoop since it gives me two free hands. This motif consists of two crosses, one with an X in the middle and one with an X along each side of the cross. To begin stitching, knot the thread and go through the right side of the work to the side of where you'll be embroidering. Next, outline the motif in a running stitch. I chose to double the amount of threads in each stitch to make the whole thing chunkier, so two threads in and two threads out. I then went back over the whole thing in reverse to create the solid outline. 
Next, I did the diagonal stitches in the center. The second motif within the larger motif was done in a similar way. Now repeat 4,000 times. Remember, the old saying is that mastery of a skill equals 10,000 hours, so even though this is a lot, it's really nothing. Here's the piece, it is almost done. I've just got this little bit to go still, so close to being done with one half of the bag. A Couple of things that I've noticed is, first and foremost, when you are doing these little guys, you really need to be thinking like two stitches ahead. You kind of want to be thinking about where you want your needle to come out and what stitch you're going to be doing next so that your needle comes out in the right place. Everything will run a little bit smoother and just look more even if you do each stitch in the same order. So especially these little crosses right here, which you can barely see on the camera right now. And in, in the beginning, I was kind of like doing them in just whatever order I did them. It, I wasn't really thinking about it but it just looks a lot more even if you always cross in the same order. So for instance, this way first, and then this way, which again, takes a little bit of planning when you are stitching. The cool thing about black work is that in theory, it should be kind of similar on the front and back because you're essentially just retracing your steps on the front and back of the work. Mine is not. Mine is very much all over the place. It kind of looks like a labyrinth, which is honestly kind of cool, like a circuit board or something. I'm getting better. I'll get there eventually, maybe with the next piece. But this is a practice piece. It was never going to be perfect. The whole point was to teach myself how to kind of get the hang of it and the muscle memory and all of that, learn these little things that I'm learning before I move on to a finer piece. So I'm fine with this guy being imperfect. All in all, I have to say that this is probably the most satisfying craft that I've done in a while. Because you're counting each stitch, they all line up perfectly. It's just really satisfying. I think I'm learning that my brain just really, really likes grids, that type of clicking together. You don't really have to think about it a ton and you can just kind of sit there and enjoy the rhythm of it, which is really, really nice. I like it. I think it's, it's time well spent. I chose the trippy motif for the back of the bag, and I'm so glad I did. I did this motif in the same scale as the first motif, so times two, but I found that all the diagonal stitches looked so much better with single threads, which meant these guys contained true outline stitches. These were so satisfying. Really, just a joy. I cut out each piece, making sure I left copious amounts of seam allowance and that the embroidery was in the center of each piece. I sewed the rectangles together along the two long sides and one short side, wrong side out. I am notoriously bad at zippers. I lined up the zipper along the open side of the rectangle. 
Using a zipper foot, I carefully sewed along the teeth of the zipper. I then did the same for the other side of the zipper. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. <laughs> it's backwards. The right side of the zipper is to the wrong side of the fabric. <laughs> Fluffing classic. In my most professional move yet, I used the embroidered rectangles as a pattern to directly cut the lining with them sewed together and a zipper on them and everything. I sewed the lining the same as the embroidered pieces and matched it up wrong sides together with the bag. I folded the zipper edge over the lining and felled the zipper edge down. And <laughs> just isn't my project if there isn't a fell stitch somewhere. The bag could be done at this point, but I thought it looked too sparse along the edges. So I made a finger loop braid of five bows, the one from my very first YouTube video, and sewed it down along the edges of the bag. I then decided she needed a zipper pull. So I looped five more bows through the zipper, tied off each end and braided directly onto the zipper. This was so much fun! I have a tendency to learn techniques on the fly, but making this no pressure project was a much better experience. I have no idea how well this bag will hold up, these embroidery stitches and the braid definitely don't hold up to the ring test, but I do feel confident in starting my kamicha now. Finally. <laughs> don't hold your breath for that project, this bag alone was like 15 hours of embroidery, but someday. As a side note, if you enjoy these little no pressure learning a technique projects, let me know because there are a lot of other techniques that I'd like to try this way. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more historically modern-y vintage-y shenanigans. I upload about every fortnight. Bye! Greetings and salutations, friends. It's time to quasarly, it's time to quasi-properly learn a new to me skip. It's time to, it's time to, <clears throat> it's time. Greetings and salutations, friends.